breakfast with Corey at like 7 o'clock in the morning. It was like 6.45 maybe. We both woke up at 5.30 and have been up ever since. Uh, it's 9.30 now and I came to one of my favorite thrift stores. I'm just going to walk around and check things out. Just to get out of the house before he leaves, he's going to play a show somewhere. And I just wanted to do one of my favorite calming activities, which is walk around the thrift store. So we're going to do that now. I stopped at a Goodwill that I don't really go to too often and I found some fun Halloween-y things and a really weird thing that I've got a weird idea to paint. Uh, but that's it for spending money for me. So I'm gonna go home and I guess I'm gonna start trying to prep stuff to paint and I really want to make today about working on projects that I have in my brain meat. I'm home from thrifting. Um, so far it's been a nice day. I've had a good time. Um, I have found that after year one anniversary and being really active and busy all day and then year two not having any plans and mostly just having a really low energy day where I just sat around the house and didn't work on things and didn't go anywhere. What I have learned from that is that in an effort to not feel frustrated or feel concerned that there's going to be that spiraling into depression feeling, it works better for me to stay busy We both got up and we went and had breakfast at Denny's and then we ran to the store to pick up some stuff and when we got home I sat down and I was I was resting and I thought to myself you can't just sit here you can't sit down on the couch and start scrolling through social media and allow yourself to become sedentary here at the house because that is the most sure fire way for me to start to feel sad, especially with Corey leaving today to go play a show. I knew that it would be really easy for me to just close in on myself. I also have to be really selective with my social media and TV or streaming that has ads because the pervasiveness of alcohol consumption and how it is pushed in the media and advertising is a really big trigger for me and I know that some people think that you've got to work through it until it's not a problem anymore but honestly it it's not just a problem for me as a trigger I think that it's a problem that over consumption and self-medication with alcohol is so widely accepted as almost like a funny personality quirk that it makes other people think that it's okay or normal to do it and when you stop doing it and when you start to push back on that idea or that practice it kind of makes you an outcast and again Everything like that I try to take with a grain of salt because I know a lot of this stuff is projections and a lot of it is just me feeling unsure of myself. But I also know that a lot of it is real and it's the same way that other people feel that it's not just me. 
uh, here on the bed. I've got a lot of thrifted stuff that I picked up today and a lot of that is projects. Um, and I'm going to sit down and make a list of the things that I want to work on and then I'm going to start working on some of them now and make use of having the house to myself. <laughs> about my sobriety it is something that I think helped push me towards that depressive spiral last year. It's the feeling of failure and not that I had had a drink and failed my sobriety, but that in recognizing my substance abuse issues and then taking steps to to no longer abuse alcohol that I was a failure that I felt that my friends and the people closest to me were frustrated with me or disappointed in me or tired of hearing about it because I couldn't just be normal. I couldn't just have a drink that I often didn't want to be out where drinking was happening. I felt like I had failed myself because I couldn't just drink and not drink to excess or not drink to get drunk. As if the consumption of alcohol was the baseline for what is considered normal. Um, I've gotten better at owning when I just don't want to go somewhere or just don't want to be somewhere, especially when a large number of those people in the crowd are drunk or are currently drinking, I'm a little bit better about just saying no right off the bat. Instead of having to feel bad about it and then try to be in the situation and then find myself really, really, really overwhelmed and concerned about the situation that I put myself in. So I don't often feel as bad about it, but I still pretty often feel disappointed. I've noticed that whenever I talk about the difficulties that I encounter in being a person that doesn't drink around people that do drink, I have people who say things like, nobody's ever questioned why I don't want to have a drink. Or I've never heard anybody say that they thought it was weird that somebody wasn't drinking. Just a reminder, just because it hasn't happened to you or you haven't heard it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, because it does. And sometimes it's really hard to say to somebody, I don't drink because I'm an alcoholic. And then whenever the conversation continues, they often say, that's not alcoholism. When you explain or describe situations 
because they are things that that person also did or is currently doing. A lot of people don't want to use the term alcoholic. They don't want to associate themselves with it. And that's fine. That's their choice. I grew up with a grandfather who was an alcoholic. I knew the potential was there. And it gets easier to own it and work through it and deal with it, but it's something that is there every day in my brain. So just some food for thought <laughs> the next time that somebody may mention to you that they don't drink. If they feel that they want to elaborate and perhaps they tell you that they don't feel comfortable being somewhere that people are drinking because they're an alcoholic or they're sober now and they don't like to be places where there is alcohol consumption as the main focal point of the social situation. Just try to be considerate about it. It just, just suck those words back in and just try to be chill about it because it's not easy to say these things and it's not easy to figure out what path is going to work best for you as an individual. Uh, yeah. I feel like I had a pretty good day. Uh, it's 8 o'clock. It's not super late. I'll probably be up late because I have been. Um, all around it was a nice day. Um, I'm gonna cut this off now. I did some rambling about just what I do day to day and then some rambling about sobriety. Uh, and I'm gonna throw it together and edit it and get it posted so that I can do another one tomorrow. I know you're all so excited. <laughs> ah. uh, thanks for watching this and listening to me ramble about something that is really important to me but is still kind of weird for me to talk about in this medium, anyway.